it's going. You recognize that voice by now? A mysterious stranger, you can't say anything. You gotta hang in there for a minute. Sorry, sorry, mysterious stranger. I forgot to tell you that we're better for a second. See, but he said something that had that low. Nobody low knows. Where I just pull up the cigar smoking pastor. <laughs> oh, I love baseball. A cigar smoking pastor. Always. Yeah. Oh, what do you mean? He's, He's a always. pastor, this incredible pastor. He's got a service on Sundays, an online service. He's going to elaborate on this. Right. Um, he brings, you know, a real positive word. That's so cool. It yeah, is. I've already deep okay. respect now. And not only as a musician, it takes a special kind of person to be a pastor. Yeah, he's a he's pastor, a but he's a cool yeah. pastor. Or he's, uh, you'll see cats like Paul Bean and, and uh, you know, some of the other guys that, that have mics on their horns. You never miss them. And then you yeah. never miss them. They when they and then they have freedom. They can move around. Their exactly. story around. Absolutely. Martin yes. Rossup's yeah. another yeah. one. And, and I'm great do, example. And dude, I don't even know if you've seen the new. Uh, well, not the new. No, it's like it's a, like, the car. It's the new Ford Focus. Yeah. No, uh, <laughs> but Mike Mendoza, homeboy who played in the last one, was on sax. He played oh, over right, at right. Claudia's yeah, not yeah, long he was ago too. Yeah. Man, I'm, I guess he's a nice addition. Plus, I love him. I got to give him a little shout out because he just took a picture of himself with four of the paintings I did for him. I don't know if you saw that. He's right in front of See, him. Right? I had to get in because now everybody else is going to be more than me. Right? Yeah, so, yeah. So I, I know, three right? Three in the paintings. So. Okay, well, cool. hey, 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 that'll work, you know. But I just thought it was cool, so I had to give him love. Anybody who's giving, and I can be, compete with anybody but Andre. Okay. Oh, exactly. Andre, how many does she have? I think she's up to like 15 or 16 uh -huh. now. I think this makes number 16. Okay, mm -hmm. Andre, check this out. I got love for you. She's in Oregon. She comes mm -hmm. down all the time. Mm -hmm. Our dude, our main dude, Kevin Kane here, is mm -hmm. super good friends with her. You can yeah, always tell the story. That's, I'm, 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 <laughs> she's that's what she that, calls yeah. you too. Yeah. yeah. But I'm going to give her a little bit of love. she introduced me to you here. the first time we met. She said, yeah. Probably. Yeah. Because right. you were not playing that day you came to the show I right, think. yeah right. see now i remember it's all coming back yeah to i met him once before that he quarter played. gummy is not really taking effect <laughs> you're still good right yeah i'm still perfect yeah, your, your quarter <laughs> organic gummy uh, mice, uh, microdose on it yeah. no, i know but, i'm a lightweight it's <laughs> friday night so we're going to come out all kinds of you came all the way from sacramento so hopefully he's going to hang with us for a little while because you got to make up for your six minutes. No limit is hungry. But I'm gonna you. give I'm gonna give Andre some love, some special love here because she just bought the 16th yeah, she bought piece of art. I think it's <laughs> she got like three. The last one, she's from which was Oregon, lovely incredible, lady, right? Who's yeah. a big fan of this? She comes emotional down, um, mm -hmm. to you know to see her mom. Okay, and then, but then whenever she comes down, she always makes it a point of coming to whatever show she yeah, can. And I'm in coordination yeah. with her yeah, about what we that. can do and, you know, yeah, what she's going to do. Yeah. yeah, and she tries to book stuff around it. And she happens to be real good friends with Kev here. And she's got a birthday that's coming up, which I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to make just logistically. But we're going to give her some love, talk about her birthday. Okay, and by the way, let's not talk about what it is. But I have something to give to you. So she just bought the new painting. Yeah. Path to light. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you I like that as the past. Is that you I saw do. that? Yeah. With, with the cross. Is he talking okay. about? I'm just trying to get you. Okay. Yeah. I'm fishing. He's for a pastor. Another He's gonna love yeah. that. But so I did that. That's the worst thing. I can't even steal it from her. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. you get to see it, I guess. I don't know if you go to Oregon or not. I'm going to take a picture with it before I leave. Oh, okay. oh so that sweet. She sees oh, okay. that I got the first oh, two. Okay. Good. Oh, good. 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 Absolutely. Good. Maybe all of us. Uh, I told her I was. And she was like, oh, gosh. <laughs> you know, it was really funny about that. If he didn't mention that, I already had that uh, as an idea just to torture her. But uh, I just want to give her love because that makes number 16 as far as the paintings are concerned. Right. And I mean that's a lot of original yeah, art. I, right? she I think she's got. I think I, yeah, I've lost count, but I think it's sixteen in total. Maybe three of them are sketches, and okay. the rest are paintings or whatever. But love you, Andre. Look forward to seeing you. Happy birthday! If I don't catch happy you. birthday. Yes, so we're <laughs> going to give you a little. Work. Um, how did you guys end up meeting Kevin? So it was really kind of weird. Uh, we were both online on the backyard. Site. Oh, okay. Oh, isn't it is. interesting, right? Yes, yeah, well, <laughs> I had just done a, a session with Sonny Fairley and a few of the other guys. I think Jason was with us that time. And I did a solo in there, and she, in the live feed, said, Loved your solo. 
Oh. But Sonny thought she was talking to him. And so Sonny replies to her and she goes, Oh, I, I love George too, but that's not what I was talking about. <laughs> and Oops, so that, she, that's funny. she found me online and went straight to her and said, I wanted you to know that I was talking to you, mm -hmm. not the saxophone guy. Oh, he was great, great too, and I liked his. I just didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. Right. But I didn't want you to know or mm -hmm. miss that I, I was talking to you. Right. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, thanks, you know, and so, she, you know, I, my sermon is online every week. So right. the following week, she was on my sermon. Okay. And I was like, oh, wow, I know that name. I just saw it, you uh -huh. know. Oh, so she must have looked you up or something. Well, yeah, she, because she, uh -huh. she was my friend online then. Oh, okay, you know, got on it. On Facebook. Yeah. So after that, uh, she hit me up and told me that her mom lived in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. And the next time she was coming down for the, the event that she knew I would be at, she was asking if uh, she could come with me because she would be in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. So that's how she became my road dog. Uh -huh. you know, she's been to every one of them since then with me. She hops <laughs> in the truck when I roll and we're out. Oh, that's <laughs> cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then we're just really good friends since then. Yeah. Oh, well, so much cool. love to you. Andrew. Happy yeah. birthday. Yeah. We're going to see you at number uh, 51. That's going to be, uh, when is that? That's April 13th. So it's coming up soon. Yeah, okay. What's on your mind, Ray? My mind is, on my mind is, yeah. I want to ask Kevin a question. Please. I'm going to need yeah. you to project. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> All right, okay. You're going to project. Yeah. You, All right, Kevin, um, I don't know much about you. I did hear you play, which I thought was amazing, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. And I was excited, and am excited to have you here, and excited that, you know, obviously, Peter said you were the guest, and I said, fantastic, yeah, on a Friday night. Yes, the yeah. best part. From Sacramento. <laughs> From Sacramento, yeah. And we usually have a podcast on Thursdays, but, right. but Friday's cool. Yeah. Worked this yeah. time for me perfectly, so. Yeah. yeah, was that because of a work thing? I yeah. forget how that worked. Okay. Yeah, but I'm um, interested to know a little bit about, and I know, you know some people may know this, but I don't, um, like how you actually got started on the bass and why the bass? So I played orchestral music for my first six years of playing. From six to twelve. And from, then, from what do you mean from six to twelve? Six, six to years. twelve years old. Mm -hmm. Okay, from six years old you played orchestral music. Yeah, because I was playing in the school band. Okay, got it. Orchestra. And what were you playing? The bass. Bass. Okay. I. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'll admit this. I started out playing guitar. Okay. Uh, in the orchestra, and my fingers are kind of short. Uh huh. The. Instructor walked over to me and says, you know, I think we're going to try on something that's a little easier because I couldn't make chords. <laughs> well, chords are hard with like long fingers, you know, let alone shorter fingers, right? They're just hard. I'm learning stuff all the time. Yeah, I, no. I just couldn't do it. I suck. Finger <laughs> <and> chords. <laughs> and chords. Yeah, well, the guitar is, is hard to learn. I mean, because of the finger dexterity it requires. Okay. Yeah. Well, I've tried. I just suck. I have and small he hands. Had, he didn't know how to tell me I suck. <laughs> So he says, I'm going to have a bass here for you. But he was a bass player. And I had seen, because he would have his bass in there. He'd practice when we were in the room. Right? So he had a Fender Jazz bass in, in the case. It was Sunburst. It was gorgeous. Yeah. And uh, so when he said I'd be playing bass, well, I knew the school didn't have electric bass, but he did. So I'm thinking I'm going to get to play his bass. Uh huh. So I showed up the next week and. Mm -hmm. He walks me over to this thing that was bigger than I was. Oh, <laughs> this, goes, the upright bass? Upright. <laughs> and he goes, here you oh go. My I'm like, what is this? Right. Yeah. Oh, like, you saw the Fender with the right? Starburst yeah. on it. He was all excited. I, I, know, I was yeah. totally let down. Oh, wow, my God. That's, that's a great story. That's funny. I hate Sunburst funny. finish to this day. <laughs> <laughs> so in fact, I just got my first Sunburst bass just like two years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, in all these years. I just didn't want to touch Congratulations. It. You've okay. overcome that. <laughs> overcome that <laughs> bad well, memory. I had, I had that trauma. <laughs> that trauma. <laughs> that trauma. <laughs> PTSD. PTSD <laughs> from the upright yeah. base. Oh, He's like, right, what the man. hell is yeah. this? I get it. I get it. It's a pretty intimidating piece. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas what would be not intimidating? Well, they would, well first of all, the, 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 the Fender Sunburst. <laughs> The oh, sunburst right. bass is like a cool instrument. It's like who doesn't want to hold that, you know? Well, it was it was an electric bass. Yeah, and I mean, and then you're an upright bass. It's like no, I get it. Yeah, okay, I get it. 
Yeah. I don't even know anybody who played the upright. Exactly. Like, thing, you know? But I happen to love the upright days. You probably mistook I it for it now, Yeah, right? yeah. I, I probably love it. I love it. Initially mistook it for a cello and thought it just missed the boat. Nope. No. Nope. Because the cello guys would tell me how bad I sucked on bass. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, you know, you don't even know how to tune it. See, cellos are tuned in fifths. Yeah. And basses are tuned in fours. Okay. So I would look at him and say, you idiot, I can tune this thing. I'd get uh-huh. mad. We had these little pitch pipes, right? Uh-huh. And we'd blow into these pitch pipes and try to tune them. And they would have their stuff all dialed in because they had tuners. Uh-huh. But I couldn't do it, and the pitch pipe sucked. So I learned to do it by ear. Mm-hmm. So then... Developed a superpower. <laughs> well, I could tune on the fly, and they still had to go find their tuners. So. Uh-huh. Tune on the fly. Sounds like a song. I like it. Yeah. Tune on the right, floor. Sounds like a bad fly fishing joke. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or a really cool soulful song. Yeah. So for, an my, e- for an album called Superpower. Yeah. We should come to the Superpower. That's what we do. Somebody right? take notes. Yeah. Kevin Kane starring yeah. Kevin Kane. Oh, that's right. We got a like, shaft kind of movie thing out yeah. there. Yeah. We, we have the picture of them on there yeah. with the Fender somebody. Starburst base. Oh, yeah. Wait, you play, play. That, that quartered gummy book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's working. <laughs> okay. okay. You like it. Come on. No, uh, I do this. <laughs> it's Friday night. Okay. And you know this because you know me for a while. I actually invite the idea of going off in different directions. Like right. you have a choice. Exactly. <laughs> like he doesn't know that by now, right? Are you saying uh, you're dictating it or myself? Oh, I'm not dictating anything. Yeah, okay. Right. Right. No I one is. Yeah, so so that's just embedded in me. It, right. you're saying it's to be fragmented and go here and there. But I like that. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you why I do is because otherwise it seems a little bit, it's like having that husband or that wife for 50 years or the girlfriend or boyfriend or mm-hmm. the dog it, that ends up looking like right. you because you've had the dog for becomes predictable you almost mm-hmm. know where they're going no, right you're not predictable okay right? See, that's and you know what even close that's that's good. Good. and you know what that is that is an incredibly beautiful just characteristic of of you and of anyone but of you is that level of spontaneity I'm so, and I'm not saying that I'm attracted to you, so I'm not, I, I am, but I'm not, oh, like as a person, you know. I'm oh. so concerned. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to feel about what's happening right here. Okay. No, I don't Scummy. want you to think I'm coming on to you. Gummy. Pass that gummy, will you? Have a kiwi. Okay, you really think things are going to be done for you. I don't know how to feel. I either feel flattered or insulted. No, okay, let me start all over again. He says, no, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's what the red is. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, I'm not. I don't want you to think I'm like. No, you know, can I? I, 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 I yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, that would be that, that would be impolite. That would be No, that would be recorded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, they're like, yeah. What? No, what sorry, what were we even talking about? I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was saying. Well, I was talking about. <laughs> Take over, Kevin. No, please. Take no, over. I want to finish this. Okay, okay. okay. she you wants to change <laughs> you. I want to finish this. Okay, this is about spontaneity. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I was saying that that's such a, a beautiful characteristic of mm-hmm. you. Okay, yeah, and I love that in anyone. I'm so attracted to that. Yeah, that. Well, because no one wants anything to be stale, you know. And if you live in the present moment mm-hmm. mostly, mm-hmm. then that isn't the case. You don't have to worry about getting stale. Because you're not staying on the surface of life. Okay, and in all seriousness, I Mm -hmm. completely agree with you. That's why I champion the improvisational thing as much as I do that we introduce in the club. And thank you, because we go way back, so you were doing this in the club as well. And I remember a particular one where he was doing an improv in the impulse room. I don't know if you remember this or not. I bet you do. And we, I actually did a video where I incorporated that. There was a song. Um, where you had another bass player. You had George oh, Franklin. Yeah, George, it was remember. you and George Franklin. Bass Boys. Bass Boys Incorporated. Mm-hmm. So as the other guest was telling us when they came, at that time, I would say, okay, uh, Wednesday night, Thursday night, whatever it was, I would make an improv. Yeah, but I gave them a title, and I said, oh, I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to really mess these guys up. That was cool. We had our Two artwork, bass yeah. players, a drummer, <laughs> and sax. Uh, we had, no, we had a, uh, Keys? Keys, yeah. It was Keys? Yeah, I think it was Carlos Sanders. Oh, Carlos Sa- Okay. So, two bass players, Keys. Kevin Lewis. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm getting it on, too. <laughs> keep, keep going. 
on, girl. All right, baby, you need room? Okay. okay. We need right, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, what are you? No, I think you're making me hot. Yeah. <laughs> but she's not attracted to you. No, no, not at all. <laughs> What's that song? Not in love. I don't know, there's I'm a certain kind of going on here too now. <laughs> what, uh, what's the song? I'm not, I'm not in love. love, right. What's that, that song? Who's that song? It's probably going to be us. Okay, this shit's going a lot deep end. My boy right here at DC is like, I don't even know what's happening over there. Okay, it's I'm just gonna, banter. You, it's yeah, just, know, it's just banter, just which is whatever. Around, right? We're talking around. about going in different directions yeah. and the flexibility. And, and the spontaneity. It's the creativity yeah. of yeah. an artist. This is why I yeah, appreciate it, you. As and thank you, dude. And I feel like you have that, Kevin, when you are playing. Well, I think that's why he and I go on. Yeah, so like, no. Know. When I see you playing, you are in that moment. You are just, it is like solid. You know, yeah. like he's in the moment. I agree. Yeah. I agree. And that's on the heels of him saying earlier that it's difficult because it sometimes you can't pick up. So you, as opposed to some of the other musicians, right? You know, whether it be the keys and he's on the other side of you, right? And I don't know if he has that same issue or not. Well, I usually have eye contact with him. Mm -hmm. And so... For so you got to create a path, right. a visual path. For those of you who don't know, when we first were doing this in the impulse room, Peter would be express about telling us that we weren't allowed to share chords. We weren't allowed to play any old songs. Okay. We couldn't play anything. What does that mean? You're not allowed to share chords. We like on on the bandstand. It's not uncommon, especially when musicians haven't played together. They'll call out a chord and they'll call out a, uh, intervals, and so you might hear it in a blue. I see. So you can't have those kind of cues. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One, four, so five, no cues. No cues. Okay. Knows what we're playing, okay. Right? So, yeah, I've yeah. not heard that term short chords, so now I know. Yeah, yeah I'm not a musician yet. Yeah. Them, right? yeah. I didn't even know. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So that's one of those things that you know, it's a safety net for musicians. You know? Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> so, and when I first mm -hmm. did it, you know, you now in fairness, Alex warned me. He says, "Hey, when we get done." This guy's kind of weird. He's gonna. Oh, he him. said. Yeah, Alex he, did. He, he said that. He, did. he said. Weird. He said the guy's kind of weird. Alex. He's <laughs> gonna tell us to play something that we make up on the fly. Uh, and I said, "Why?" And he goes, <laughs> "It's just his thing." <laughs> okay. Okay, Alex. And, and All right, I gotta have to text said, Alex. <laughs> well, what was funny is then he said, "If we're going to get paid, you probably want to play it, whatever." It is. <laughs> <laughs> so in the gig, I forgot. I'm doing like I normally do. I shut everything off and I'm pulling cords and, and, and Alex suddenly, is over there and his eyes are big as saucers. And then Peter turns around and goes, hey, before you guys leave, and he pulls yeah. a Columbo on us, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> and he says, before you leave, uh -huh. can I get you to do just one more song? I'm leaving my wife. I'm like, dude, what are you trying to do? It sounds just like Peter. Right? Like yeah. yeah. And so he says, and so I'm like, well, what song are we going to do? Uh -huh. And then I remember what Alex told me. That's funny right shit. Uh -huh. And so exactly. he goes, so I'm going to give you a scenario and you just come up with what works. So this is going to be a 60s bebop kind of yeah. jazz thing and it's going to be, you know, in the Arizona like desert. During a smoke <laughs> you know, that sounded like a stoner from, like, what is that? Like, you guys are so doing mushrooms. Or room and, 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 and it's going to be funky. So I want you to start this off. I'm like, me? <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Alex is behind the keyboard. Did your Dying laughing, right? Like, oh, what the? I never learned oh, this. So funny. Alex ahead. is cracking up. He's trying to keep his head down, and I, I can see he's <laughs> laughing at me, right? You know, because he knows I'm like, <gasps> right? So, and he goes, and so why don't you just start it off? <laughs> like, smoke filled room. I, I think if you play it back, you'll hear me saying this. I'm like, smoke filled room in the '60s when I was five, <laughs> right? He's all pissed off. And I did, I was right. hot. I was like, oh, dude, I got to do this. Yeah. Page, you know, right? Yeah. So, yeah. And so, yeah. so, so so Alex is cracking up the whole time because he yeah. thought, he knew I forgot, right? Yeah. So, right. and he was like, oh, he thought he was going to get away. Right? And so, and I was, I was getting away, okay? Oh, right? Wow. So, he, done, he caught me it. right while I'm pulling the plug on the, on the app, right? So, That's so funny. yeah, so. I just turned around and I'm like, what am I, how am I playing what he's talking about? And what did no you do? Clue. You killed it. You must have killed it. Well, because he said it's going to be funky. I was like, I'll run with the funky. Yeah. I don't know about the smoke run in the, the funk. Sixes, run I the funk. Can't do that one, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I did tell him, I said, man, I was five. And I knew it was on the tape. Right? I think I remember <laughs> this. Yeah. I was 
like, I was five. I and was it garnered right a laugh. Right there was people in there. There right. was actually a decent sized crowd. Right. It, was, it was a full crowd. It was yeah. a full crowd. So, oh, wow. Well, so, so that's an element. I, I, didn't, I thought they had left. Where okay. some of the musicians mm -hmm. may go through a period until we get to know each other of this guy's tripping balls. Okay. There are a large number of people that there's an entertainment Right. Aspect of it because those people were laughing. They were crying. Crying. Like, that whole like, inter exchange between us. And when you said that, I mean, they started laughing, and you guys killed it. I'll have to send you a couple of songs. I do you have that? Do there you is have that one, one or two of them. But do you, you know, have that one? One we're talking about. Uh, uh, well, there was. They played as a group, so there was a number of songs. Uh -huh. Yeah, but that particular that was, one, I don't yeah. remember. I'll have to see. I, 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 you have a lot. You have a lot. Yeah. It was early. Okay. She, I'm going to let her, because she's serious. I'm the one who has a tendency to take us <laughs> off on tangents and stuff like that. Okay, Go well, ahead and well, give, her, just to, give um, them another. Yeah, well, just to run back. So you, um, you, they, the, your teacher gave you the upright bass. Right. And then what happened from there? So how did so you So then, a, because the cellist kind of ticked me off, I would go and turn her tuning knobs right before every session. Oh, and so passive aggressive. They didn't know how to, <laughs> They were like, how does, how does it keep going out of tune? Mm. You know, in orchestra, you get there the like four room. hours early, you know, <laughs> let your instrument activate. So they'd get there, tune the instrument up, and right before I went and picked up mine, I would go to theirs and twist the knobs on their tuners, knock them out of tune, because I knew they couldn't tune without a tuner. <laughs> and I could do it by ear, so... That was my little dirty secret all through uh, orchestra, right? So. Logging Excuse me, Father, away. for I've sinned. Wait. I <laughs> confess his guilt. <gift>, so. <laughs> you know, I'm teasing. What was that? I'm just saying I have not given up my hope that Loganita's company sponsors us. Yeah, because they sponsor Andre. <laughs> <laughs> they sponsor you? They, they who what? They sponsor Andre. Did they? Everywhere we go, she's like, I need an IPA. <laughs> right? so, okay. Oh, right. Doug and I do that because that's his favorite beer. I like that's, an that's IPA. Favorite, so. And she comes and it's kind of funny. She's like, You have the log in here. So I say, Well, yeah, oh, Doug's helping. Too. So definitely, and I've become accustomed to it. Mm -hmm. um, but part of the running funny thing is that, you know, we're growing. As I tell a lot of other people, it's. Um, oh, you're going to project now? I'm going to project. I forgot <laughs> I wasn't projecting. Part of it will be caught, the other part maybe not so much. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it's kind of a running joke. I did have the log and eat out here. But there is, I got that idea from, of maybe trying to incorporate them at some point in time. But what's difficult is that we've gained popularity largely because of people like yourself and yourself for being a corner piece of state. Yeah, no, no, right. no, dude, I appreciate it. There's been, it's countless. I can't remember between the club and all seriousness and the yeah. inside. It's a lot of them. Okay. As many as anybody. I and know when we left the club, I think I had more than anybody in the club. Very and well then be. we did the, the winter series. Right in the warehouse in yeah, Claudia's warehouse. warehouse. I'm yeah. sorry. We didn't know each yeah. other at that time. Yeah, that was cool. If you remember series. that, Doug. Yeah, man, that so was good. cool. I, I got a bunch of them under the belt now. Yeah, and okay. did you yeah. ask him a series of questions? Oh, I already um, asked him a question that well, I didn't get the answer to yet. So. What was that? Yeah, it was about um, the start of his bass playing and um, okay. like why. I covered that while he goes. Yeah, to perfect. Right? Well, but that was kind of interesting. <laughs> well, well you'll hear it when, you, when it's done. Well, but you, give me a little bit. Like you, you, gotta <laughs> to you gotta listen when to it. When I leave, then you get to it's listen to it. It's at minute 4024. Okay. Yeah, so I'll, there you I'll go. Thank you very much. Let's start it. I'll figure out what it is. When I was 13, my mom was a singer. Oh, okay, you come from a musical she, family? Just your mom? Just my mom. Okay. She, my mm -hmm. brother's a guitar player. Oh, well, you mom. do come from a musical family, but yeah, the kids picked up music. Yeah, we like now. listening to music, but mm -hmm. only a handful of us like actually doing it. Okay. My mom and her sister, they all sang. So. Okay. Um, and she used to sing for Ike Turner. And at the okay. time, he had a keyboardist mm -hmm. uh, named Johnny Hartman. Hartman. What? And oh, Johnny Hartman. Yeah, Hartman. Okay. Oh, Hartsman. Yeah. Oh, I was like, not the Johnny Hartman. You know no, he, he was yeah. the Johnny Hartsman. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, Are you sure they're not the same person that no, you're talking about? No, here? no, no. Hartsman, Hartsman and Hartman? Yeah, it's okay. a singer. Right. Yeah, vocalist. Yeah. Okay. But uh, Johnny played everything. Mm -hmm. He played keys, he played sax, he played trumpet, he played harmonica, he played guitar, he played bass. Wow. He played bass with his feet better than I could play with my hands. I mean, wow. The guy was phenomenal. Right? Wow. But his real thing was the B3 organ. That was his primary uh, 
claim to fame. And his best friend was another organist, a guy named Jimmy Smith. Uh I didn't know who Jimmy Smith was because I was a kid. Anyway, long story short, John comes to my house when he moves back to Sacramento to see my mom. And I'm practicing on my upright. I had to practice for a half an hour a day and record the practice for my mom to hear to make sure I did it Mm -hmm. before I could go out and play. So I do my chores, do my homework, Mm -hmm. practice, record the practice, and leave. By the way, I was 26 when I found out she never listens to the recording. <gasps> oh, no. oh, she just did it. She listened so to the first few seconds sure you were disciplined. the, and the wow. last few seconds of the end, and yeah. then she put the tape away. <laughs> no. I probably don't blame her. She didn't tell me until I was 26. <laughs> well, she's a mom. He's learning, you know. And it was probably hard. hard. Music, and it was horrible. Yeah. He's learning, you know. Like, she's going to listen to it. No. Okay. Come on. All you're right, you're right. At too. first, I was like, oh, okay. Well, all right. Yeah, it's going. Yeah, I was 26 when she copped to that one. Oh, so, right. right. That's cute, though, so, that she copped to it. You know? yeah, and why, why, cool why at that point did she decide to Well, she just wanted to, to tell you, never listen. She just wanted to clean well, the Well, you're successful now. Her it was her opportunity yeah. to, get, she was, you know, to get you. Oh, yeah. Were you doing something wrong? No, we were just having a family conversation. Uh, talking you know, shit. Whatever. Yeah, and she, she said, mm-hmm. You think you slick. You think uh-huh. you know everything. You didn't know all that time you were recording them practices that I wasn't listening to. Oh, mama. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> thinking that she did and she just yeah, said she, that. She, did. Yeah. she told me. She said, I would listen to the first 30 seconds of it, make sure you started, and then I fast forward the tape to the end. Of I'm going to go with Nick. She's telling the truth. She's telling the truth. All right. And she said, because if I knew you did it, you, you had to put it on tape. I didn't need to hear everything in the middle. Yeah, exactly. That's how that works. Yeah. Uh, so that's when John came over. I was practicing, and he asked me to play what I was practicing, which yeah. was this uh, a song called Brandenburg Concerto Number no. Three. It's really popular; everybody knows mm-hmm. it. Yeah. So I was playing it with my bow, uh-huh. and he goes, "Can you play that with your fingers?" Now, at twelve and a half, I was quite the symphony snob, uh-huh. and I said, uh, "You mean pizzicato?" And he uh-huh. laughed. Oh, you mean that's the term for playing with your fingers? Right. Okay. Yeah. And he said, no. What is it? Pizzicato. Pizzicato means pizzicato. fingers. Okay. Plucking. Okay. And so uh-huh. I said, you mean pizzicato? And he goes, uh-huh. no, fool. I mean with your fingers. <laughs> and I was like, oh. Right. Yeah, so, like, oh, right. my God. Okay. <laughs> you know, so, right. so I said, well, the song wasn't meant to be played like that. Oh, my good Kevin. Yeah. And I don't know who I'm talking to, right? I have uh-huh. no idea this guy. Uh-huh. You got a little attitude and everything. As as yeah. alive, right? uh-huh. you know? And so he says, he said, well, isn't that music? And I was like, yeah. He said, music's supposed to be what you make it. Mm. So make it. And I was like, if I do it, will you leave me alone so I can finish practicing and go outside and play? Uh-huh. And he said, yeah, do your thing, kid. Uh-huh. You know, so I played it. Mm-hmm. And he goes, that was pretty good. He goes, you want to come and play Sunday with me? I was like, what do you play? He uh-huh. said, I play a little organ. Oh, he's very humble, huh? Big time. Big time. I had no idea this guy's an international yeah. superstar, right? So, yeah. And so he says, I play a little organ. And he goes, uh, I'm going to be playing at this club not too far from here uh, on Sunday. And if you come down and play, I'll pay you 50 bucks. Wow. I'm 12 and a half. (laughs) Okay, right? He is your, like, uh, I'm all over this, right? 50 bucks, I'm there. Okay. That's like 500. That's like 500. No, it's even more than that. Like real money. Inflation is like. (laughs) So, so, uh, I carried my double bass to the club. Oh, my God. And I walked. Mm hmm. And uh, I got to the club. They wouldn't let me in. Thank you. Uh-huh. They said, uh, I said, I'm the bass player. They were like, whatever, dude. Yeah. Know, right? Get out uh-huh. of here. Man. You You're can't come here without uh, your mom <laughs> or your uh-huh. dad. So I went across the street called my mom. I was like, hey, they won't let me in the club. You uh-huh. know? And, of course, I'm used to acclimating the instruments. So I get there four hours early like I do at all the symphony. Uh-huh. Uh, and nobody's days. there. The bouncer was there and the uh-huh. bartender was uh-huh. there. Uh-huh. The bouncer wouldn't let me in. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So I call my mom. Mm-hmm. She starts laughing. She says, "Okay, babe, I'll be down in a minute." So, mm-hmm. so she drives over to the club. And I'm banging as hard as I can on the door because I'm really ticked off at the bounce. It's 103 in Sacramento. I'm standing outside with a double bass, mm-hmm. mm, sweating like I stole something. Mm-hmm. You know? So he opens the door and he starts laughing. He goes, "Hey, check it out, my mom." You know, mm-hmm. like, "How are you, baby?" And they hug, and I'm like. The hell's going on here, right? <laughs> you know, they knew right? your mom. Yeah, they yeah. all knew my mom. Okay. Everybody in the club knew my mom. Okay. Right? So all the musicians knew my mom. Oh right? wow! So, so he lets us in. She says, "I'm gonna leave you. I'm going back to what I was doing." So she left, and I sat there and drank Shirley Temple's for about three and a half hours till oh, anybody else in the band showed up. So 
They all show up at 8.30. Downbeat is 9. I'm losing my mind, you know, and now I got the sugar high going, you know, so, so John shows up, I'm like, dude, where you been, you know, right, so he starts laughing, he goes, what's your problem, uh-huh. I said, we go on in like a half an hour, he goes, do you have your page, I said, yeah, it's right around, how do you miss that, it's the only yeah. thing on the stage, it's huge, right, you know, yeah. and he goes, I'm not gonna hear that thing, uh-huh. I'm like, what you talking about, he says, uh, if I can't hear you, I can't pay you, I was like, dude, that's your problem, but I, you uh-huh. told me to be here and play. Oh, so he physically is not going to be able to hear it. Right. That's what he's saying. Okay. Because they're going to turn Yeah, it's not electric. It's not amplified. Right? Right? So, it's acoustic. Yeah, right. So, and so he's mm-hmm. like, Ugh, come on, kid. Uh-huh. So we go outside. He had this bread van. It looked like a SWAT truck. That was, was his van? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And he opened the back doors. It looked like a music store inside. Uh-huh. Oh, that's funny. Uh-huh. And so he had like three B3s in there. And he had a couple, two or three guitars and three or four basses and amps for everything. And Wow. Leslie's and the whole, I mean, the whole works. He had everything. And I was like, oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> so he climbs up in the back and he grabs this bass off the hook and he hands it to me. He goes, you're going to play this and take that amp right there. And it looked like something from a science project. It had uh-huh. tubes on the top of it and everything. Oh, like, it was a tube in him. Yeah. So I'm cool. like, uh, <laughs> I don't know the first thing about playing this thing. They won't let me I touch these electric say, ones. I walked away for a couple oh, minutes. Oh, let me tell you. This is a phenomenal thing. story, by the way. I'm telling you. Okay, but wait a minute. Is this the leap? Am I? Yes, this is the leap. I was leap. gone. Is yeah. this the, the yeah. connection? This is where he's first playing the bass. Yeah, between the, the upright and the upright. Right. Yeah, so he brought his eight. So uh, this was my shit. His upright bass to the bar. And you never really held him. I never held an electric bass. Yeah, That's crazy. But you missed the part of who the guy is. So, but we'll tell you. You can hear it later. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. To to while I'm on the yeah. 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 Right. Right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> who, like who this mentor is for yes. him. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Got it. So uh, mm-hmm. he hands me his face, hands mm-hmm. me an amp, gives me a cord and a mm-hmm. strap, and sends me inside the club. Uh-huh. We're downbeat. Was a half hour when we got there. So now we're down to like twenty minutes. Uh-huh. I'm freaking out. Mm-hmm. I've never touched this thing. I don't know how to play this thing. Mm-hmm. And that's crazy. And so he and he's twelve me. and he's with adults. Right. Okay. Crazy. Yeah. And so the guitar player comes in and he looks at me and goes, uh, you all right, kid? I'm like, uh-huh. no, I'm not all right. Uh-huh. Look at this thing. Ew, it's got frets on it. Uh-huh. And he starts laughing and goes, well, that's kind of how they make them. I said, see that? That's how they make them. Uh-huh. This is what they've reduced them to. And now I don't know what to do. Uh-huh. And he's like, well, you got 20 minutes to figure it out, right? Uh-huh. I said, I don't even know how to plug it in. What do you uh-huh. plug it into? He said, the plug on the wall. And I was like, no, I got that part. How do you plug the guitar? <laughs> right? He uh-huh. goes, Oh boy, he goes, come on, kid. So he took me, uh-huh. he grabbed the plug, and he puts it in the bass, he puts it in the amp. Uh-huh. He turns the amp on, I'm like, look at that thing, it's uh-huh. lighting all up, you uh-huh. know. I'm tripping, I got like nothing more beautiful than it's damn than I can And so he goes, You're gonna be all right? I was like, I don't think so. Uh-huh. He's like, No, you're gonna have to be all right, because if he plays bass with his feet, you're not getting paid. Uh-huh. I said, I'm gonna be all right. Uh-huh. So so I ran to the bar, grabbed the bar stool, I took the bar stool, put it up on the stage. I put the bass up on its end and I played it like an upright with my eyes closed. <gasps> you did not. You played it like an upright. With my eyes closed because if I looked at the frets, I'd get lost. Uh... But I had pretty good ears, so I just listened. He would call out the chords and... And the chords run the same way. I'm not. So remember when we were talking about uh, sharing chords? Yeah. yeah. So He, he was he, calling out the chords. He yeah. asked me if I knew my interval. But, 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 like, but the chords. layout of them are the same? Yeah. On so the, yeah. On the, the neck yeah, most the blues songs... Especially older blues songs, yeah. they're what they call the one, four, five. Those are the intervals. Mm-hmm. And so uh, you're going to have a root note, a four, and a five. And it's going to be eight, four, eight, 12 bars of the root. And then they're going to switch to the four. And then you have maybe two passes at the four. And then you're going to do the turnaround on the five. And you come back to the top. Yeah. So that's a regular blues pattern. Mm-hmm. And anybody that plays blues hears it every song because yeah. it's pretty much all of them. And so I knew that because my grandparents listened to blues all oh, okay. the time when I was a kid. I didn't. I didn't know how you knew that because yeah, you well, were I, like I knew that. Well, I knew the intervals. Basically, classical music at this point. Yeah, yeah. but I knew the intervals from uh-huh. classical. Oh, okay. So, but I knew mm-hmm. how blues sounded from listening to the Red okay. House all the time. So, this guy, man. and then he was calling songs, yeah. and I recognized mm-hmm. them. So mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh, that's my granny's mm-hmm. favorite song." Right? <laughs> you know, so mm-hmm. too much. So I just yeah. closed my eyes and played what I could remember and what I could hear and. 
I made it through the gig. I got my 50 bucks. I was so hyped up. So you did get paid because they could hear you. Yeah, and they could hear you. That's pretty Never cool. brought that up right to another gig. Right? Oh, good. Well, yeah. all right. So that's where I was going to yeah, end with that yeah. next. So he gave me the bass. Oh, he gave you the bass. Yeah. yeah. And did you ever see him again? Oh, yeah. Oh. We've been, we've been all over the place. He, he, but wait a minute. Wow. 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 So he kind of scooped you up. Yeah, yeah. he yeah. did. And he made you really, he gave you that opportunity to learn oh, the yeah. Yeah. Learn the bass, and that was really your beginning. Yeah, he that's me such a thing. cool man, yeah. and that's such a cool interaction, and I love that story. I mean, You'll have to hear the whole thing. No, well, I really love that story. I mean, it was exciting for me. That is like then, pivotal in his no, life. No, no, of course, pivotal. Oh, well, I appreciate the pivotalness. <laughs> This, this, that uh, was the pivot day. But this is his life as a musician. It's so important to, you know what I mean? His, okay, I all do, of our lives are so significant. Because when I know that, and I and I know that you guys just met for the first time. Right. Or That's the part you but, didn't tell them about. Okay. So all the people we play with on the improv, we usually met, especially at the club, like five minutes before we went on. Yeah. Right. And he would tell us what time to get there and set up, and I always noticed it was staggered. That's so we could <laughs> talk to each other while we were saying that. Yeah, very calculated. So, yeah. And he would be like, hey, there's food over the there. together so they can make yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he was so, he was like, hey, there's food over there. I'm just going to get some food, you know? Feed and it never right. fails. As soon as I go sit down to eat, somebody else walks in, and now I'm eating, and I'm like, hey. Uh -huh. you're like, yeah, you know what I mean? Never any room for any plan right. or so he yeah. give us a beer right before we went on. Yeah, that was cool. And he would introduce us, and then yeah. he'd be like, okay, Do you know what? I don't think Peter was conscious of that, but, like, I think maybe subconsciously oh, he did. <laughs> do you think you, did you strategically do that? Yeah, you did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am so naive. I'm so naive. No, you're not naive. Uh, uh, you're just, you're not you know, naive. give people the benefit of the doubt. Okay? I do know. I really but, take people for face but, value. But, 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 you know, uh, I also realize, you know, part of that factor when I do that is it worked out for those reasons you said. But also is that... I realize the drummer takes a lot more to set up, right. and this instrument right. takes you know this much no, time. No, that's, that's correct. And, uh -huh. and, that know, is true. I yeah. like but to for see those the reasons, but not. But were you really trying to make them miss each other? I was trying to take advantage of all of it. Oh my gosh! Really? He, yes. You, well, he, you, he were, you, you were that strategic. A little bit. Uh, yeah, I do that with the paintings. And you stuff know, I that. will tell yeah. you that this is um, revealing. I mean, yes. Yes, it is. Not it's in a new bad way. No, yeah. not at all. But it's just a new dimension of you I did not see. No, he was a master because one of uh -huh. the things in, in that scenario, uh -huh. musicians will get together, like, we'll huddle up right before the show. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. so let's do the first couple, two or three songs. Let's just do them in one, four, five, and, you know, everybody. Uh -huh. Pick a key, somebody scream out the key, and we'll all jump on, uh -huh. right? And he didn't want us to do that. Right. So. He reminded us of the rules right before, but he only introduced us two seconds ago. I'm like, what was that dude's name? <laughs> and I would go through a whole gig and not know who I was playing with because uh -huh. I couldn't remember that. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. And it was it was horrible. I was like, uh -huh. man, I feel so bad this dude's playing his tail off. I can't even, I had to wait for him to announce it to the audience so I know who I'm playing with. That don't even make no sense. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Oh, it was, it was crazy, you know, uh -huh. but it was it was fun and I like the challenge. So, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it is challenging. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So challenging. what are some of the challenges aside from the fact? that um you can't try and everybody. interpret him okay <laughs> right, like trying to, right, so right. trying to get what the description yeah the, when he gives a description mm -hmm. it's like nobody else it's not like he just said okay i want you guys to play me a blues song and mm -hmm. like i want you to play me a jazz song He's right like, I want it to be a jazz song with a rock vibe. Why does it keep yeah. sounding like Prince? Because <laughs> that's what he does. <laughs> what's the right? In my mind, you know I'm telling the truth, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 the impression what, is what, yeah, the impression it's of, kind of me like, is like, very... It's like Prince. He's like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Do it. He's, He's like Prince without an instrument. Exactly. Okay, right? so, right. That's a compliment, dude. It, it is. is. Yeah, it's it all is. the girls It doesn't sound super masculine when it's like, guys, give it to me like this. Oh, you want it to be masculine. I can, I can do the I can do the like Kevin. Okay, guys. Yeah, please. Yeah, can you yeah. validate his name, please? <laughs> and then I want you on sex you to come in, and then. <laughs> I'm going to let you guys just do what you do. <laughs> I'm like, why did we ever start with that, right? You know, right? So why does he just say, okay, that you guys just do what you do, right? Right. 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 So, right. That whole tone sounds better because, dude, you're like, then would you play a little I did not throw my hand back yeah. like that, right? Like, right. And if you guys would just knock it out of the park, that would be fabulous. <laughs> You do that well. <laughs> I was going to say, that didn't look like you practiced that one except every day, okay? Right? <laughs> right. That was another dimension. <laughs> <laughs> that's 
I did not have your brother. All three passions are here. And you got like three dimensions here. Right. <laughs> no, I'm just, I watch TV. See, that's TV. the smoke filled room. Exactly. Right. 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 I watch TV. It's the future. Everybody that ever watches it's knows the somewhere potential in, of the in the day he's going to say it. And I, it's a smoke filled room. We all know. I did the we wait for it. Right. And, okay. I know I do get a little predictable. Predictable at Just times. that one. We just know sometime okay. in the gig there's going to be a smoke going <laughs> right? <laughs> All right. So. You need to drop that. Then. The, I'm right. going to get rid of the smoke. Can everybody have this one? Right. Five. 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 Well, <laughs> oh, yeah, <nine. laughs> at one of the other concerts, I did that. No, this is real talk. This this is some funny shit. Pay attention okay. to this. Okay. okay. We're paying attention. The, the, the last concert, I caught myself thinking that very thing and I started <laughs> doing that very thing and then I said a smoke free room. No, <laughs> <laughs> like, we're gonna keep it modern now it. and we're oh, now in a smoke free room. You can okay. breathe better. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who wants that? Oh, Take a deep breath. Right. <laughs> yeah. But the we're smoke but the smoke filled room. <laughs> Come on, bro. You forgot one part of it. What yeah. do I always say? One of the wait a minute, hold on. Across the street there's a venue, okay, uh, Vincent Judy, and and they got a great place. Right. They played there before. I think it was with Farida or whatever, and mm-hmm. maybe a couple other times. Yeah, I think that was Farida's first one. But they said the same thing about the smoke-filled room, <laughs> with the exception of they made a T-shirt for my birthday, and I think as I would say, smoke-filled room, then I'd say, "Do you have your brushes?" Right. Because I would always really, really, tell you to start with a, have the, guy, the drummer start and with the drummer. The drummers, if they show it up, their brushes, I'm like, amateur. <laughs> <laughs> you never watch any of these? Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's right. You didn't right. do your due diligence, dude. Yeah, okay. Kevin is so cool. He, he, you know, you deserve your own show. You have your show. You have a show. I have Peter's show. Right, right. No. 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 You, know, you know who she is, right? She's part of AKR magazine. I always like to give her a magazine. A no, bit. but he deserves his own show. Uh, seriously, yeah. You mean a YouTube I channel know. or just yeah, like talking to him? Again? Well, first of all, he's <laughs> like you. He's an amazing storyteller. Peter's a better storyteller. He doesn't want to fly. Uh, I, well, you know what? Bang. I want to know. We're gonna switch gears here completely because we got about half. Uh-huh. I know there's a lot of people in this world that aren't overly religious. Some are really religious. Some are what you would categorize as spiritual, which is what I would put myself into that category. What that means and how you define that is probably up to the individual. But I will, in a very short way, say to me, it's basically, it just matters how you treat other people and the type of person that you are. But you're a pastor and you're a popular pastor and I appreciate that. I tune in you know, as much as I can. What got you into pastoring? Is that, you would say it like that, right? Yes, did you say fine. pastoring? Or you what got you? Yeah, you yeah. Say, I think it's fine. Yeah. Um, that's a little difficult mm. to to answer because when you go to answer your calling, mm-hmm. every pastor I know usually resists it mm-hmm. because it's a lot of responsibility. So if mm-hmm. you know what being a pastor is, mm-hmm. you, you don't want to take on all of that. You know? mm-hmm. And you look at other pastors and you see how their lives have changed and it's, it's, they almost look like they're living in a box all the time, you know, uh, cause they gotta do this and they gotta do that. And everything they do, they gotta do, you know, but no, they're always praying for everybody else. And I used to wonder who prays for the pastor. Mm-hmm. And so when my calling was coming upon me, um, I was like, <laughs> do you know me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And and um, so my my pastor at the time came to me and said, you know, when are you gonna stop fighting and accept your calling? And mm-hmm. I was like, he don't know me. I thought I know him, but I, yeah, I he don't know he me, right? You? you know. Mm-hmm. And he said he knows you. That's why he's calling you. Mm-hmm. I was like, I, I'm nowhere close to ready for this. I, I'm not the one. You know, I do a whole bunch of stuff that I, I shouldn't be doing as a pastor. You know. And uh, he says he loves you enough. Just like you are, he just loves you enough not to leave you. Mm-hmm. Is and this is the way it actually flip me over the rail. He says uh, he doesn't call the qualified; he qualifies the called. And I just put all my defenses down and <coughs> started doing seminary work. And next thing you know, I'm a pastor. <laughs> I was like, you know, this, you know, the whole thing right through ordination, everything was just weird. 
but at the same time, I never felt more at peace. And, and it was hard for me because I had come from a big mega church um, and had quit going to church for a year because of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I wanted to shake my pastor's hand at the end of one of the sermons when he finally got through to me, huh? And uh, his bodyguards told me I had to set an appointment. <laughs> yeah, just set I, I had to set an appointment. Mm -hmm. I was like, with my pastor? Mm -hmm. To shake his hand? Mm -hmm. You want to see him, you got to set an appointment. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. I don't think I need to see him that bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, for real. Because... Mm -hmm. If he don't know, I'm supposed to know his voice, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I know his voice and he don't know mine, we ain't communicating, yeah. you know. I love that. And um, so I left the church. Ironically, I ended up going up to the other corner. <laughs> There's two churches, one on either corner. So I ended up being at the other church doing a recording as an audio engineer uh, for a group of developmentally disabled adults. And so the whole thing, I'm like, I'm going in here to record all of these special people and this is going to be crazy you know so i go in it was turns out it was the best blessing i've ever had they were amazing you know um and the guy who was their music director at the time was the music director at that little church on the corner so you have mega church on one corner and tiny church on the other right mm -hmm. and the tiny church is gray so that means all the people in the church were getting older and either dying or leaving because yeah. mm -hmm. uh, I just couldn't physically get there anymore, right? So uh, so he was challenged. So, mm -hmm. And these were his students from the developmentally disabled school mm -hmm. that he taught at. Mm -hmm. And so he was the music director there, but he was the worship leader at the church. And so they had a little annex, and they let him use the annex to record them. And so that's why we were setting up in the annex to do the recordings because they didn't have the money to come to the studio. So and I was like, oh, I'll go do it. No big deal. I had sold him a recorder. He didn't know how to use it. He goes, if I buy this from you, you'll promise you'll come at least one session and right, tutor me. Right? Yeah. So that was the first session to tutor and then I ended up doing the whole album, right? So, oh, there you so go. Um, but that was eye-opening. They were mm -hmm. some of the most darling. Right. Okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Both my brothers are alive and I can prove it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Are there not other Kevin Kane's I remember? There's a ton of them under, but you'll see my mug and yeah. um, and well, as soon as you open it up you'll see me preaching because okay. I'm in there all the time. So. Right. But yeah, so it was um it was it was interesting because leaving that big church was hard because my mom was still going there. Mm -hmm. And you know my family, they're all still going there, and I couldn't, I couldn't even be there, you know. Um, so for me, I was like, okay, I'm done with church. I just got to figure out a different way. But I didn't get out of my Bible, so I kept studying my Bible. Mm -hmm. I kept studying the Word, and what I realized is that I love Jesus and His promises, and that's mm -hmm. all I wanted to talk about. Yeah. So we started a Bible study in that little annex, mm -hmm. he and I, and um, then he got ordained. And we started what we wouldn't even call a church. It was still a Bible study. Mm -hmm. And after about two years of the Bible study, then we became a church. Mm -hmm. Five on the paperwork and did all of that. Mm -hmm. And then he was the pastor up until three and a half years ago. And he passed and I became a senior pastor. Oh, and if so I'm, it's a physical church? Yeah. Okay. Well, we were mobile. That's a good, a uh, good question. Our, yeah. our very first location was a, re a rehearsal uh -huh. studio that a friend of mine had. And, oh, you know, okay. So, so you were mobile. We were super mobile. Uh -huh. That was horrible. We had naked girls up on the walls, and it was crazy. <laughs> you come to church, you're like, really? This so we got a thumbs up from down at AC. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, it was crazy. But we had to set up and tear down every week, you know, and the guy was letting us rent the, the facility for 50 bucks because it was on a Sunday morning and nobody was there. Hmm. So he was like, I'll come, I'll open the doors, and then I'll leave. You put all your stuff away when you're done and leave it like it was. I'm like, it's horrible. How do you miss it? You know, right? yeah. if I leave everything alone, you won't even notice, right? You know, so it was it was crazy. But we were there. The hookers were across <laughs> the, the street. Of stuff, the hookers honestly. were across the street. Perfect. Uh -huh. yeah. And the porn store was across and the street. The porn, perfect. Porn, perfect hookers, pastors, cigar smoking. Yeah. We had a big old cross sitting out front. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. 
Doug, you got something to say about it. No, no, no. no, you don't. You He's still thinking me. about the posters of the naked girls. Yeah, me too. I am too. Are yeah, you? definitely. It was, it was great. Fun. <laughs> yeah, let's get back to this whole, this whole earlier warmness feeling that I was feeling. It was actually turn tricks and then come to church and have donuts and coffee and, and listen to the sermon. And then they leave. Really? And that lasted for about six months. And then we got a letter from uh, one of the... Uh, Leaders of the local community, council members, business or... members. Okay, and uh, he said we wanted to thank you. I'm like, uh oh, <laughs> what do we do? Right? He's right. like, we wanted to thank you guys for uh, helping get rid of all the hookers in our neighborhood. Oh, and I was like, we didn't do nothing. Oh, your presence. And he just was like, yeah, you did. Mm-hmm. Put that big old cross out there, and they finally mm-hmm. felt guilty because they literally were doing wow. the wild thing in the van across the door from the front door. Wow. And. <laughs> they would come. They would get out the van. Wow. Do the, the bath, right? You know, and then they'd walk okay, go pray. And some <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, girl, whatever it so, takes. Yeah. You know, it worked. And so yeah. we were always like that. No matter where That's we went, we, yeah, there was always so some kind of weird thing that was going on. But it always changed. I can see that with him. I can see you know where you just you go and you improve the place that you're going to be at. Well, now is actually the only if you want to call it a model. That's the only model we have. Leave it better than. Yeah.